Today on a very special Farmer Friday edition of This Week in Startups, Dave Matthews, the founder of New Air, is in the studio with us. Daniel De La Cruz has a question for me on the Ask Jason segment. And Tyler is here to drop some knowledge and insights, all that and more on a very special Farmer Friday. That's what it's all about, man. They said, money is the root of all evil. But funny how it feeds my people. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. But funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Introducing the newest members of the This Week in Startups producer program. Thank you, thank you to all my producers, all my little monsters out there producing away on the This Week in Startups uh, train. Boy, are we cooking with oil here. 70 people have signed up to be producers, and I, it's the greatest thing in the world for me to be able to make one email to 70 loyal sol soldiers, lieutenants, assassins, and bounty hunters. I've got all of these people now, all part of the family, and I just send one email, and they, just go, they go out, and they start destroying and ripping stuff apart. It's awesome. Power. I love it. Isn't it great, Tyler? You're on the list. It's like, oh, we should do a story on IPOs, and they're just like, yeah, it's like no, this, they're, they are great. They're like this rabid yes. dogs, and they're just like, we have to, they, they get a list yeah. of guests, they get a list of questions yep. together. I mean, the show is getting better and better in all seriousness because instead of having just, you know, whatever, two producers, one right. and a half producers, now we got like 71 and a half. The producers are doing a great job, and I really thank them. And if you would like to join the producer program, go to twistlist.co. It is the most innovative thing uh, I've done this week. Uh, Surprisingly accomplished. That's probably the most people. innovative thing I've. I mean, you've been with me for four years now. Yeah. Where does this rank on levels of innovation? I mean, I did steal it from Adam Curry, but <laughs> if I didn't steal it from Adam Curry, where would it list? I did adapt it a lot from Adam Curry <laughs> because he. See, everybody had donations. Then Adam Curry made them producers, mm -hmm. or he called them. Something. What does he call? It was. It was um, he calls them something else. Soldiers, or he's got something else. Yeah. Army. No, that's Twit Army. Well, the guy that did this is E. Frank originally, right? You oh, could buy the little, the little ducks. Yes, yeah, so you could buy the his, ducks. Right? But this is a whole different level. Like I'm it. actually having people produce. They're actually doing the work and getting the credit. Uh, and it was great. I met a bunch of them in, in person. And now anytime I go to a, a conference to give a keynote, I'm like, okay, I'll give the keynote. You don't have to pay my travel expenses. You don't need to pay me. None of that nonsense. I just want five free tickets. So read, write, web, sold out conference they're going to oh, do. Nice. Big deal. Very expensive. I yep. said, I'll take five free tickets. They're like, oh, free tickets. Um, how about two? I'm, like, ah, I'm not going to do it. The five free tickets are none. All of my producers took the five free tickets. That's awesome. They're all coming for free. So we just put, now it's like candy time. I'm just, every week we just come up with new ideas of how to get the producers more involved. Last, this week we said, what if we let the executive producers get business cards that say executive producer nice. of this week in startups? <laughs> then they can show up at any conference and say, I produce Jason's show nice. and get a free ticket. It's awesome. Uh, anyway, it's so great. I love doing innovative stuff. And I love innovative uh, folks like the Good Fun folks at Trotta. You would not be listening to This Week in Startups, independent media like this, that you can't find anywhere else on the dial if it wasn't for folks like Trotta. And Trotta is such a great company. They just held that nice crowdsourcing uh, event that I spoke at uh, last week. And, of course, Trotta is a crowdsourced pay-per-click marketplace. And they were showing me some of the screenshots. Kieran, can you get me the screenshots for next... Whoa, something just took off. Mm. Is that your phone? I got tagged. Oh, no problem. Uh, Kieran, get me the screenshots of Trotta that they showed at the um, Crowdsortium event, because it was really impressive. But they have this whole system where the people who are search uh, engine uh, purchasers, people who buy SEM, search engine marketing, the paid per clicks, those little experts, it shows them battling with each other to see who can do a better job of buying ads for you to get your uh, search engine marketing campaign going. It's really impressive, and they have a 1,000 paid search experts, and each of the paid search experts is like a level one, two, three, or four, and like they all compete um, to save you money, basically, and get you more clicks. So if you're a paid search expert and you want to get in on the fun, go to Trotta and uh, see how they can help you earn extra um, cheddar. And new promo, from now until June 1st, if you sign up for Trotta and spend a minimum of $3,000, your company will receive a free ad on Twist. What? Hey, cool. I'm going to read your ad. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to Trotta for supporting it. Um, 
For further show notes, you can go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, slash twist episode 145, just so you know the show notes are public. Uh, today on the program, Dave Matthews, the CEO and founder of New Air. He's an inventor. He's done a lot of interesting things. Uh, and he also, um, we got, well, we met at... Uh, we met a year, right when I moved to L.A. to do When, my when you met to L.A., we met at a Katsuya. restaurant at yeah, Katsuya. We were, the, we were at I Katsuya, yeah. and we saw you there. And then uh, I said, hey, I'm going to win the competition that right. I don't even know you're going to have in a year. Right. No, you didn't say that exactly. <laughs> but we wa you wound up saying, hey, I got this interesting thing. And I said, that does sound interesting. And then sure enough, you wound up at the launch conference. And you did very well. Thank you. And you had a great experience. Did you win something? Uh, okay. Something. 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 Kind Some of award. Huge there. Something huge. Who knows? Uh, anyway, welcome to the program. Thank you. Um, best technology, wasn't it? It was best technology. Was it? Do we have his uh, award, Kieran? Don't we have Oh, yeah, I haven't here? received that yet. My whole no, team No, we literally is... just got them last week. Oh, nice. Yeah, we'll, we'll get them to you during the show. Awesome. Okay, so now you have a long uh, history of being an inventor. Yes. You've worked on a, creating a lot of new products. Yep. And uh, you also uh, created the worst product in the history of technology. I, I actually have done that. <laughs> okay, let's it's talk about... Still, your, to this day, it gets I didn't bring you on to talk about your achievements. Ever. I brought you on to talk to you about what is rated the worst product in history. Yep. I remember this product well. Yep. What I'm holding up here is the Q-Cat. It looks like a cat. Horribly designed, in fact. It looks like a rodent. Um, well, you already had a mouse for your computer. You I figured mouse, you needed so you a, cat. a cat. Right. <laughs> and so, branding, not your strong suit. But um, <laughs> you are a great inventor. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, well, I'm giving him an award. Yeah, here's your award for making a really <laughs> ugly product. Uh, uh, explain the to me numbers. the inspiration. For, I'm, I'm, I'm busting on you, but ah. hey, nothing like blowing $50 million to um, uh, make 198 million. $198 million yeah. into this piece of garbage. Yep. What was your original intention? So, we looked at barcodes on products, and everything had yeah. a UPC code, EAN, whatever. Whatever. Books, music, DVDs sure. last forever, but the stuff you buy, um, you know, like, what would you do if to, back then Google wasn't around, right? There's so no Google, some, right? No Google, right? So what year was, is this? This is 96, 97. 96, 97. Yep, we had this little TV show called Net Talk Live in Dallas, Texas. Mark Cuban came in and hooked us up on AudioNet wow. before broadcast. Very old school, okay. Yep, so we're Legit. like, we're like doing this TV show teaching people about the internet. We're like, right. wait a minute, there's no real good way to get around the internet because Yahoo right. is just a directory. Mm -hmm. So we went to Fry's. And I got one of these uh, metal barcode scanners here. Okay, so this is your standard metal barcode scanner. Yeah, it's like 90 bucks. This is for this like thing. what you would put at, uh, on a, um, a point of sale. Yeah, exactly. Point of sale. So I'm just scanning stuff. This that's is the old school. That's the pen. You this is a pen. Right? The, well, it's the same technology in this. And this right. is before optical mouse, right? Then. Uh, right, there were no optical days, mice. There were ball mice, and, and it was just a mess. There were no smartphones. No smartphones. There were no cameras in phones. No, Nokia took off infrared on phones that they brought to America. Right. In Europe, you could beam content. Sure, uh, to didn't exist other. in America. Didn't you exist. have to remember, the only thing close to that would be a Palm Pilot, I guess. When did Palm start? That was, that was about the same, about 95, the same time, 96, 96, 97. 96, yeah, but were... they weren't connected, though. Right. Right, so internet was a tower machine. There was a dial-up, AOL. Yeah. And um, we said, wait a minute, we've got all these codes on things. What if we build a database, just like DNS does for yeah. when you type in this weekend startups.com, yeah, whatever? Yeah, resolves it. Resolves it back. So yeah. we said, what if we take those UPC codes and resolve them? And because we had this television show, people would email us saying, Dave, what was that site you talked about on your TV show? Right. And, and you're like, let me send you an ugly looking device for you to put on your computer. Well, sort of. We started the technology as an audio barcode. So oh. just like Shazam does for music, we did that on our TV show. Jesus Christ, you're so, smart. You have you. all these crazy ideas. They are really crazy. That is a crazy, delicious idea. So yeah. in 96, you said, hey, what about an audio barcode? That's right. How much weed do you smoke? None I mean, at all. I've never done drugs. drugs. Can you imagine if I did drugs, though? I, I think know. this might be a Jesus whole. Jesus Christ. And I go to Burning Man, too, which I. You know, being there if you're a Burning Man, you're doing drugs just by being there that's because true, that's it's true. pretty. But you know what the art? You just rub up against there? sweaty people who <laughs> have so much drugs in their system, you're just getting attacked by it. Um, okay, so you say I want to make this barcode so that people can scan their Campbell's soup or their magazine or their and CD deep link you to the actual and send you so you don't have to type anything in. This is a really great idea. Thank you. Now you you build we added a prototype geo to it as well. So if you swiped a Coke can in Atlanta, Georgia, you'd it, get SeaWorld. If you swipe that same Coke can in uh, L.A., you'd get uh, Magic Mountain. You mean an ad for Magic Mountain? No, it'd be like, so Coke at the top of their cans, they put uh, specials, promotions. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 I right? see. Right, so we Coke invested $10 million in this idea. Wow. Because they saw it as a way to extend the product, and whether it was gaming. I mean, tell me about the it. Coke meeting. You come into Coke oh, with this so thing? Oh, so great. So great. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Me. So we were going to actually put the, the Coke ad on top. So this yeah. was, we did this design because we wanted people... People didn't know how to scan, so we figured if we put it at this sure. angle, it would kind of like teach them to hold it like a pin. That way they weren't holding it all clumsily. And then when we did the cat, that was more of like a play on words. 
but those same idea. You hold it at its haunches. It's a contact scanner. We made this very much like a precursor to the optical mouse. And this cost us like seven bucks to manufacture. So that's bagged with a CD. We had the audio technology as well. So we thought we were hot stuff, right? Yeah. Raised $198 million. So the meeting My with Coke God. went like this. We said, we can interactivate all of your products. Any consumer code, we could give you. Wait, wait did you say interactivate? Yeah, is that okay? Yeah, I, I don't have know lots what of, I mean. I you would interactivate? Of, I have lots of Davis. Yo, by the way, on sure. my computer, you could see a close up of the QCAT. Yeah, can you pull that up for a second just to see the girl. hotness? Designed in Dallas, Texas. Come on, pull that up, guys. And um, inside of its mouth is a very inexpensive optical reader. This turns out so had the most sophisticated. $198 million. All strategic, not a single VC dollar. Wow. So what was the company worth at its peak in terms of valuation? Oh, um, it, I was a billionaire. I had multiple islands. I had you know Absolutely. farms everywhere. For, yeah, yeah okay. it was all great. Um, the By S1s, the way, just so people know, I'm not dressed like this, wearing my boots. I got my boots on too. Nice. I was on the farm this morning, so I came here directly. You know, I took my daughter to the farm. Nice. I don't own a farm. My friend owns a farm up in Malibu. It's incredible. I want to buy a farm. Nice. I don't actually really. I, I was going to get go, islands. I just want to go every month. Um, but unfortunately, then 2001 hit. Right, we didn't get right. an IPO. But you. Wired magazine. How many of these seven dollar like, devices did you ship? Like ten million. Well, we didn't. We we brought into America ten million. Most of them are on eBay right now. So if you want to buy one of these, there are. <laughs> what do they hundreds. go for on eBay? Like fifteen They're, bucks. Like five or ten bucks. But you know what? I throw them. There's up a bunch on, of hackers using it now too, right? Yeah, it's the most hacked product ever, which is awesome for me because this was a hack project in my garage, right? I I hacked away, went to uh, Fry's Electronics, had a bunch of really smart developers in uh, Dallas, Texas, that built the back end. And um, I'm so proud of having the worst invention ever because it was this great hacking experiment. And now when I go out, I know people are like, hey, Dave, you know, love the QCAT. Or, so it's like a cool geek street cred thing for me. Uh, and an absolute, complete, utter embarrassment on a business level. So then you It was go the razor blade model, though, right? Wired right. Magazine used to be this thick. Forbes had a thousand issues. Right, and you were going to scan this. In a way, this is QR codes. Way ahead yeah. of Way ahead of QR codes. So you're yeah. 20 years ahead of the QR codes. Yeah. And so as an entrepreneur... Um, for how many years were you bitter or embarrassed by this? And, for, and at what point were you able to become as jovial and at peace with it as you are now? Right. So um, 2001 was a bit of sour grapes, right? Everything swallowed up. Everything dried up. How sour? Uh, um, well, I'm still here, so I didn't know. No, no but tell me what it was like. Um, it was tough, you know. Um, um, what can I say? You know, it's I mean, like how did you I had all these great stories because we met with Steven Spielberg and his team, Jeff Katzenberg, all these guys like the Dream Team were at the table and we're showing Spielberg. So you're how, with DreamWorks SKG showing him showing this. Showing him this. And then, but most of all. And you're thinking after that in 2001, after you've had the Coke meeting, after you raised yeah. $198 million, and after the whole thing comes apart and you are rated the worst. Well, that inventor, came later. Okay, but well, that came later. That came later. But essentially, now you're. Uh, all that paper wealth is gone, yeah. and you're looking at cra cases and cases of these. And are you thinking, oh my God, I'm a total fraud? No, no, no. Technology worked, right? Okay, so, you're not, actually, so you didn't have Shack this, but did you have feelings back. like, how, how on earth did I bunk? No, how on earth was, did I blow $200 million? So, I mean, I could have cured cancer or something with that $200 million. Oh my God, that's what I say now. I'm like, my technology <laughs> does not cure cancer. I'm actually working on that. I will have that. No, but I, seriously, years. take me to 2001. So, I'm trying to get you to cry. Take me to 2001. <laughs> No, it was, it was, I was watching the last episode of Oprah. I need to get into this uh, crying thing. So let's just have, let's dim the lights a little bit. Tell me in 2001. Tyler, okay. Yeah, give me a hold there. Yeah, yeah. Take me in 2001. You have to it be was, honest as an entrepreneur. It had to be crushing. It sucked. Yeah. It was like marriages were lost. Were you were embarrassed? Lost. We had really? Marriages employees. were lost? Yeah, we had like When you saw those employees and you looked them in the eye, sad. what was it like? So it was sad because we had this dream, right? We are, like, I love to get up and public speak. I love to get people yeah. on board. I uh, love to evangelize. You were selling your vision. Yeah, we had 300 people that were under our oh guise. We had all this money. We thought we had all the money in the world. You did. But the problem was, at <laughs> that time, you could not spare an expense because everything had to be done last minute. So I'd yeah. fly to Germany to meet with Bertelsmann for a one-day meeting. And then right. I'd have to be back in New York. So it's a $15,000 trip, right? Sure. Yeah, we had offices in London, New York, Any LA, private jets? Private jets. Wow. Um, Natby, the airport got shut down at Natby because we uh -huh. had this TV technology. Right. NBC launched our technology on must-see TV Thursday night. Right. Remember when you like had to see TV? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right? Wow, that was cute. So they launched So tell me about the day you had to lay off 300 people. Um, luckily, we did it in tranches or groups, so it wasn't that bad. Tell me about the worst day. It was sad. You know, I had to let myself go. Right, so really, that was an interesting conversation. <laughs> yeah, very Self, nice. yeah, you are. You gotta go. You, you're better. You have better days ahead of you. You will look back on this day as yeah. something educational. So actually, the good thing happened. The it went into bankruptcy. 
Um, one guy bought all the QCATs, a guy in California. He calls me up, he goes, what do I do with these things? Because we put a little bit of encryption inside of it for the oh. DMCA. Because just like the DVD, we put a little bit of code that would scramble the data. That way Microsoft couldn't take it over and embed the decoder in their operating system. Oh. So because we made the effort to do that, it was uh, protected. Hmm. And, uh, but now there's tons of ways to declaw it, which is a really cute way that the oh. hackers came up with. Um, but um, yeah, this whole, um, uh, we bought back the intellectual property. So we fostered the IP. We then took those 110 patents and we licensed them. So a lot of the QR software that's in your Android phone or wow. in your iPhone is now using the technology. And um, I just treated it as a building block. Radio Shack hired me back. They put 38 million in this and then brought me as their in-house inventor two years later. Wow. So a year after the demise. So the lesson here is what? So my parents tell me the fact that I get up and just go at it again. Like, Relentlessness? Say it again? Relentlessness? Rel yes, yeah. Persistence. And then there's QR codes everywhere. Resiliency. I'm an advisor for two QR code companies. Uh, one uh, LA great company, ShareSquare. Um, so no matter how big of a flop your movie is, having made a movie, you'll be able to make another one. I think this is my MBA program, right? I dropped out of college. I learned more in this wow. you know, four years of my life. Than All right, show me the next other. invention. And then okay, so then um, when I'm working at Radio Shack, right. I'm their in-house inventor, and I realized that the guys that are working there are, have been there as long as I've been on the planet. So I'm like, wait a minute. How are you going to innovate with a company when... People are, they're, you know, they're stuck in their ways. They're myopically moving the ship in one direction. Mm -hmm. And I came on board. I wanted to move it and shake it. So best thing that happened to me, though, is I took that Fort Worth, Texas job of having 7,200 retail locations where a lot of guys wanted to get their products in the store. And I meet Blake and Jason from Sling Media, so Slingbox. Wow. So these guys come in, and they show me this little box. This is the first generation box. Right. It uh, takes... Uh, cable connection into it or over the air one, antenna yeah, or your DVR and it has a little remote control output on it. This is 2006, 2007? 2006, yep. 2007. I remember they gave them away for free at the D conference, D conference the first right, one. I got right. one for free. Yeah. And then I bought the HD one. And so they came in and they showed us this at Radio Shack and I said, look, this is changing the world. This is empowering the consumer. This is extremely disruptive. It's going to upset a lot of people and I have to be involved with it. <laughs> wow. So they'd uh, just raised their uh, first round. They're working on their second round of funding. Huh. And uh, they moved me from Dallas to San Mateo and uh, worked with the original startup team. And uh, we built three more boxes after this huh. one. And what did you add to it? I mean, obviously, this wasn't your invention, but you yeah. added a lot to it. What did you add? Yeah, so the problem with this, it was very cumbersome to set up. You had to I punch through that. a firewall. You had to, this is what UPnP is out there. It's supposed to work, it really doesn't. Um, what is UPnP? Uh, Universal, Universal Plug and Play, right? Uh, it's, yeah, what, sure. it's what allows devices to see each other on a network. But, um, so I'm all about user experience. Like, as an inventor, I want things to be sunshine, rainbows, glitter, and unicorns all day long. But unfortunately, with tech products, that really doesn't happen. Like, Apple would never release this product. It's too complicated. Never, never. They would never release it. But when you do get it set up, it is magical to take out your iPhone. Or, I remember I was watching the NBA when I w we were on trips and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, yeah, I don't have to worry about it. I just w yep. watch it on my DirecTV, and I can TiVo something and watch it. doesn't matter what hour right. it is. It's so magical. Yep. And I go to Asia all the time and uh, work with suppliers and, you know, and trying to watch TV And now this is built into, the worst. Is, is this technology built into cable boxes now? Is Not yet. So, so we actually had a product that was a cable modem and a tuner built into it, mm. which solved all those problems with the firewalls. It was brilliant because uh, right. it sat on the edge of your cloud or, right. or outside of the sure. DMZ, right, in the unprotected zone. The demilitarized zone exactly. of, your of your network. Right. Yeah. Um, Genius. The problem with that is the cable operators, little iffy on whether those rights are inside the house or outside the house. The other thing is Cable Card was just coming on board. And with Cable Card, they have this, all these bits and all this geeky stuff where it's like, uh, you can only record it once on your DVR if it's HBO, things like that. Uh, but I had some great meetings. Um, uh, head of technology with HBO says, I'll use these all over the infrastructure for HBO. Uh, to monitor their head ends, so there's a really cool B2B play. I mm. worked with KPIX, the CBS affiliate in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. We put 3G routers on these, so they were oh, actually wow. able to drive down the road and check live, uh, do live news from the van without having to set up the microwave. Wow. So I was really the, the Sling next generation product guy, uh, huh. both on partnerships and products. And you know the iFi, the SD memory card? Yeah. So that was going to be Sling Film. So I was working mm. on an, uh, an innovation strategy within Sling, and then Dish Network bought them. 
You mean oh, the iFi card nice. here? Nice, love it. There it is. Boom. So that's my iFi card because I was going to take a picture today at the forum. Yeah, so I met it's my favorite device. I met Ziv with the founder of that fact, before. It was would, just a prototype. I'm going to just go ahead and ask Kieran to put this on the put the iFi on the approved sponsor list because I love the iFi card and I would totally read an ad for them. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and put the QCAT also on the approved <laughs> sponsor list. I love the QCAT and I go ahead and put the Slingbox. The Slingbox is still produced, or yeah, no? it is. So Dish Network yeah. bought them. Yeah, uh, they built it into the DVRs for Sling uh, Sling. Uh, uh, DVR uh, combo with Dish, hmm. and then I'm like, all right. Uh, why couldn't DirecTV have bought them? Now, because I, I have my HD, I, you know what? I set it up and then it stopped working, and I didn't have the time to do the. You know, I don't think uh, the final chapter on Sling has been sung yet because uh, Dish and DirecTV, they're both downstream; they don't right. have upstream. Mm -hmm. But Charlie Ergen, who owns Dish, very shrewd guy. It cost him a lot of money to keep satellites in outer space. He has bought a lot of 700 megahertz licensing, and this is all hypothetical. I've been out of the company for years, but it wouldn't surprise me if he uses the Sling technology which has very interesting bit shaping characteristics uh -huh. about moving uh, bit packets larger and smaller based uh -huh. upon available bandwidth. Wouldn't surprise me if he goes to a terrestrial network using Sling technology. That's my quote. Or that's wow. my um, prediction there. A ter terrestrial network using the Sling technology. On so you put a Sling on your, you have a Sling no, no, DVR. No, no, he just uses the tech, right? So the, you have a, like a VOD a box. Yeah, you have a VOD box, but it's over the 700 megahertz yeah. spectrum. Right. And so you say, I want this movie, and he ships it to you over yeah. what is essentially 4G or something. Exactly, yeah. So hmm. we'll see if, what happens with that. But. All right, so when we get back from the commercial break, I want you to tell me about your latest invention, the one that won you this incredible award. Thank yay, you very much. Yay, I love you, that Jason. the awards are out. It was such so a magical great. event, wasn't it? Amazing event. It was. Like it was it. so great. A thousand nerds. Uh, a thousand nerds. Best love Technology 1.0 competition February 23rd and 24th to Tooth Tag by New Air. So proud. Um, well, I'll give that to you. I'm going to give that special uh, award to you. And uh, one piece of software that I would give an award to since I use it every day. As a matter of fact, last night we published an email newsletter uh, from the launch team, the team wrote on the newsletter, not just me, um, about Google freezing their search results and how, you know, you're, they're not making manual changes anymore, with the exception of spam. Very controversial story, but I was able to get that story out within minutes to 22,000 people, thanks to Mailchimp. The newly upgraded free plan includes the ability to manage lists with up to 2,000 subscribers and send 12,000 emails per month for free. There is no contract, no trial. The free plan is always free. New, now integrated with Amazon's new SES simple email service, and it's able to handle transactional email. We use MailChimp to send the launch newsletter, as I just said, which you should be signed up for at launch.is slash newsletter. And actually, I saw on the MailChimp blog, they just released, released some interesting research um, on, uh, here we go, MailChimp's email marketing blog. Um, well, that's interesting. Inbox inspections now include user agent. Hmm. Um, Oh, wow, they have printable reports. I think every time I look at this, look at they have send button added to archive. They keep adding stuff. New birthday field for sign-up forms. It's like, this is just in May, all the additions. I mean, this is how you can tell a great company. Go to their um, go to their corporate blog, and you see Ben, who's the CEO, founder. He just They're constantly posting new features. I can't keep up with all these new features, and every time they add one, it's free. Free, 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 and to you. Um, at least in my experience. Maybe it's not free, but it gen I think it's free every time. Um, I, haven't, I don't remember anything that was paid. Anyway, it's an incredible system. Go use it. It's awesome. Uh, I give it my highest, highest five-star uh, rating, and uh, thank you to MailChimp. And go ahead and just say thank you at Trotta and thank you at MailChimp on your Twitter account because free, free, this show is free. We don't charge you for it, and the way we don't charge you for it, let me tell you something. At This weekend, it cost about... Now that I'm CEO, I'm starting to do the estimates. Fifteen hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks, depending on the show, to produce an individual episode. We need the support. I'm just talking about keeping the lights on. I'm not talking about my salary, which is zero, or Tyler's, which is zero. Uh, I mean, it's expensive to run a network like this, uh, and we're upgrading to HD. That's the big news. So we're going to be in HD within two weeks, I think. Anyway, thank you, Mailchimp, uh, for making all that possible. Uh, Dave, you have a new product. I do. You're going to show it to us now. I would love to. Uh, go ahead, and this is what you show it at. Are you going to show us what you showed at launch? Or are you going to show us the latest and greatest? We're going to show the latest. Game. Let's okay. just talk about it a little bit. Yeah. Because there is a story for this. You know, the QCAT. You wanted me to cry. I'm not going to cry about that because. Did I you ever cry though about lot. the business failure? No. Did I you go to, to therapy? No, I went to uh, Anguilla. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> was great. I met a guy on the internet. Great. No, no bad can come wow. of that story. Wow. Craigslist casual <laughs> encounters. Okay. So he turns out he's in Anguilla. He's like on the one of the best beaches in the world. He's got Wi-Fi, and everything's crumbling. It's summer 2001. So you ran for the hills. Uh, went there, and I uh, just kind of like uh, rebooted, recompressed. But, How long did that take? Um, I was there a couple weeks. Yeah. 
Um, oh, only a couple weeks. Yeah. I know people who went away for two years to yoga, ashrams, yeah, whatever. I they were just, that's too oh, God, I was worth so much money, and now I'm worth nothing. <laughs> you look back on it, it's just pretty funny, actually. <laughs> it's amazing. There were some people who are just like, they never recovered from the, from the great crash of 2001. They just never got back in the game. They, they, were, they would tell me when I was the CEO of Silicon Valley Report, I was editor, oh, my God, we're the greatest thing. We're going to crush the planet. And now I meet them, and they're like, they got beards and uh, two kids, yeah. and they're like a VP of nothing at some big-ass <laughs> company. And they're like, yeah, I'm the VP of nothing. I get paid $300,000 to do nothing. Wow. And my kids are in private school, and I want to kill myself. And I'm just like, wow, what happened to you? You were going to change the world. That nah, could be going. So much. We had a Net Talk Live, this TV show across every network, CBS, yeah. ABC, NBC, self-distributed. Um, uh, it went from there to Texas Cable News, right? Yeah. I was in a million households across Texas. And then you're a charlatan. Yeah. From visionary <laughs> to uh, charlatan. I mean, that's how we all were, right? Yeah. Okay, so tell me the story here. So I started thinking about the barcodes, and, and that was very much contact. And QR codes are everywhere, but yeah. it's kind of a pain in the ass to, to stop, break down, launch an app, get the focus right. And Which is how most people scan them in today. Right. So I said, well, wait a minute. What if we take all these stray radio data, these little blips like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, near-field chips? They're all beaconing and ID. NFC, right? I have one here. Near-field communication. So these are my, I gave these out uh, at the I.O. conference, thinking that Google would give away a Nexus S to everyone, but it turns out so they So this is an NFC sticker. Yep, so. Um, and there's a chip in it. So there's so a little bitty chip. And Go ahead, on show this, it, guys. On this chip is Somebody a um, 7K. Yeah. No, not that. Uh, there there you go. So there's a 7K chip in here of data, and it has my URL, toothtag.net. So the first time you scan this, it takes you to my website where you can download the toothtag software. Huh. So that's step one. Step two is next time your phone comes in contact with this little tag, it'll do something using our engine. Whoa. So it's a real innovative way for you to um, control the buzzer on your house or set the lighting or do whatever you So if you I want. put this at the front of a movie theater yeah. and it was at the front of the Arclight movie theater yep. uh, or my office and it was just uh, and it just said um, don't forget to put your phone on vibrate when in the office. Yeah, exactly. And everybody who checked in with it with tooth tag for mm -hmm. the first time agreed yep. that every subsequent time they walked by it or they tapped it. So, so with near field, you actually have to touch it. It is a contact. Ah. Because so the then it, I powers, see it on the door, and then I go like this. Doom. Yeah. There's two types of radios. There's active and passive. Active okay. would be Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, where just by walking into this space, I see your Wi-Fi, I see your laptops, I see your devices beaconing. So we capture that beacon. We say, ah, when we see Jason's MacBook, let's do something. Let's check in on Foursquare. Let's change Google Voice forwarding. Ooh. Let's do something. With near field, though, you actually have to touch it because the phone has an antenna that's charging the antenna on the tag, and then the tag burps back its radio data. So you actually have to come within a few millimeters of it. Hmm. So what's good is the platform now, will enable any radio. All the Google places right. things that they're footing in people's windows, mm -hmm. uh, and we have um, Lior on the program from uh, Hot Pot and Google Places. They put up all these things that said, you know, Google Places. Now right. you, they actually secretly put in these NFCs. That's right. And you're gonna be able to touch your Android phone to it, and then they also announced that they're gonna have mobile payments. Yep. That's also going to work through this. Yeah, so what I like about what we're doing... Which we predicted on the show. Yeah. So when we did Slingbox, it was very closed, right? You yeah. had to use the Sling Player and the Sling software. When I did Boxy a few years later, we made mm -hmm. that as an open platform where anyone could build... Wait, wait, what do you mean when you did Boxy? I was the first American that the Israeli team hired in order to productize Boxy oh. and turn that into uh, the social media player. Jesus and it's boxwe.tv. Um, you can buy a box now with it. You can hack your old Apple TV with it. So this whole idea yeah. of being an open framework, an open platform, is what... I'm doing with tooth tag as well. So if you have a NFC tag that uh, is put up by, um, you name it, if it's mm -hmm. Visa or if it's Google, they're only going to allow you to connect to their platform, mm. right? You have to do something like check in on places, do something else. With tooth tag, we're opening it up. So you could build ah. a script. You could do whatever you wanted if you're so a if web this developer. So if this was just a tooth tag at um, Pinkberry, mm -hmm. the yogurt place, yep. and you made it, I could click it, and then it would say, you are at, uh, if I was Gowalla or Scavenger or any of these other platforms, then I could say, I know you're there, because they yep. are the only people allowed to have the sticker. Yep. So in some ways, it forces that. Can you hack it? So sort of. Um, what happens when you tap these tags, it says, what do you want to do? Do you want to uh, launch the Facebook application? Mm -hmm. Do you want to watch launch the Foursquare? Do you want to launch the mm -hmm. wallet? Whatever. Is that built into phones now? Is it's that built in. So it's just to like Android or? Yeah, it's very similar to what happens when you put a on Android. Uh, Not iPhone though. Well, iPhone doesn't have NSC yet, right? So uh, 
They're, but they're, they're trying to they're, they're supplement it by giving everyone these stickers to put on their phones? Well, that's kind of different, right? The sticker is the output. What we need is an ingest. We need the reader inside ah. the phone. We need the capability. So all these iPhone 4s, once again, Steve Jobs is going to get us to throw them away to get Isn't NFC. Isn't great? He's such a... But I don't know that we really need NFC yet, right? With 2Tag, we can do a lot oh. of this cool stuff with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Yeah. Right? Oh, I see. So, but the whole gist is, remember when you put a CD in your old Windows machine, it goes, what do you want to do with this? Do you right. want to play music? Do you want to copy it to the hard drive? Right. That's what's happening on the Android phones. It asks you which app you want to launch. So if you launch the app that they want you to, Foursquare, you can only do that action. What we're doing is opening it up. So you can launch any action, a web action, so if I, a local I can, action. Can I tell your... Can I tell my Android phone to default to your app? Yeah, you can. Yeah, there's a uh, checkbox. So that's good. So yeah. then, then you become my media player, sort of. Whatever. Right? And then you do the direction and say, would you like to check in on Foursquare, yeah. Gowalla, and Facebook yep. concurrently? I, I can actually show you this. Okay, let's do it. Right here. So um, I've got a Nexus One phone here. Okay. Um, I have several things that I tagged. And the tag is just done by scanning the room. Mm -hmm. um, you can see at the top, it's my BlackBerry. So what I'm going to do is click on that entry, and I see the signal th strength is really strong. So I know that thing is next to me. So I have things that are in range and out of range. Now, with near field, you don't have this idea. It's just in range. You're like, okay. It's a tap. But for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, you can do things in range and out of range. So what I've done is I've... So I'm in range of my Wi-Fi network at mm -hmm. home That's or right. at Mahalo, or I'm out of range. When yep. you just say out of range, my that, phone is picking it up or not? Uh, your phone used to pick it up, and now it does not. Got it. So a scenario out of range would be I park my car. My phone can no longer see the Bluetooth of my car, uh -huh. so it drops a pin on the map. So this is the office here at ah. Mahalo, and I've got a nice little map, and it shows where my car was last seen. So now I can do breadcrumbs ah, back so to my car. So your phone knew you were in your, knows you were in your car because it connected. I tagged it once, yeah. You tagged it once. Yep. You said, this is my car. Yep. Now it says, wait a second, the con Bluetooth connection was dropped. This was the last time we had the Bluetooth connection. Yep. So if you were just absolutely smashed and didn't remember where Happens you parked your car, <laughs> you would be able to go find that. Kids, right. please do not drink. and not <laughs> No, the point is, if you were like some people I lose I know, my car all the time in San Francisco, no, New York. Trust I mean, me, I, I have somebody in my life who does this often, which I'm not going to say. <laughs> but... Tyler. Uh, Tyler, exactly. <laughs> Tyler and I go to them. We go, Tyler and I go to amusement parks, and then... Tyler Katsu parks the car and she never knows where we, she left it. <laughs> anyway, so now you don't have to fight with your wife over where the yep. car is because yep. you dropped a pin. Right, and and you can do this right now, but you have to do it manually, right? You have to load the app. Oh, it's so annoying. Hit the little flip tab, drop a pin, right? Yeah, there are these things like where is my car? Yep. Yeah, right. And the, there's very um, what we're trying to do is be not all apps for all people, but we want it to be as extensible as possible. So we put build all the these, platform. Right, be a build platform, and and we did several items. So I'm going to go back to my phone here. Yeah, let's go back. I can do several things. I can play a song. So the scenario here was I've got Tyler tagged. So anytime I'm in a coffee shop working. Wait, wait. How do you have Tyler tagged? I've tagged his uh, Bluetooth on his laptop. Oh, so, if he's, so he's Bluetooth is going, and it says this yep. is Tyler's laptop. Yep. You saw it and told Tooth Tag to that tag Tyler. Tyler. I got right. you. Okay. So now if I'm he's in a coffee shop working, I walk by on the street. My phone starts playing our theme song, Tyler. It's amazing. <laughs> I think I made it through the rain. Is that what we're doing now? No. So, uh, Don't go break in my no. <laughs> Kiki D. So now... I, Are I, we going to have a karaoke episode? That would be so yeah. fun. So what's cool is I would normally have to look at his places yeah. on our Facebook um, or I'd look at his Foursquare check-ins. Yes. Now I don't do that. Two Tag does it for me. It runs in the background. It's proactive. Right. Pro versus reactive. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So another example would be to vibrate. I do this for my ex-girlfriends. When they get too close to me, my phone starts going crazy, and then I know I should go. That's a great PR story. You don't actually do that. <laughs> no, you do, really? Wow. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, right. Uh, and so if you connect to your girlfriend's Bluetooth, yep. you, when you walk away from her, you can figure out where you left her. If I'd want to. Yeah. If you like... No, but if you if you had a child, I actually do that with my CTO, right? If you had a teenager, yeah. When no, my if, CTO strays, it buzzes me. Exactly. Drops no, but if you were, <laughs> let's say you were with your child or teenager, yeah. and you're at the shopping mall or maybe I don't know, whatever. You're, if all of a sudden their phone, their Bluetooth goes off. Yep. Either they turn their Bluetooth off, their phone battery died, or they walked away from you. Yep. Yeah, it's That's a, actually pretty cool. So, so that means I could take my old Bluetooth headset bingo. and t I put it on my child's lapel or in their yep. backpack for the day because right. that lasts 24 hours and use my junky old, ganky Bluetooth headset yep. to be a 
identifier. Yep, so geofencing's been around forever, right? You geofencing? Get, yeah, geofence. You can go to Sprint or uh, AT&T, and you can set up a, a geofence using clicking oh. mouse, 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 and you can say, when my kids leave this region of my neighborhood, then alert me. No one's going to do that. That exists? Yeah, but no one does it. It's a pain in the ass. You have to set up ahead of time. What we do is a Oh, geo when their cell phone? Yeah, use your cell phone. It uses really? The, the Whoa, cell. that's Machiavellian. Weird. Well, Rick it's Family it. Finder. There's like all these uh. you know, fuzzy names around it. Got it. But you have to set it up ahead of time. What we do is an automatic geofence based upon the radio proximity. So Got Bluetooth, all whatever. Right, and so there's new devices called Bluetooth LE that should last months. And you'll be what? able to put it on a keychain in your camera bag, on your laptop bag, Bluetooth on your keys. Bluetooth LE. Yeah, it's not out yet. It's, oh, on, it's on the cusp. Oh, wow. I've never even heard yeah. of that. All right, here we go. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, this one from executive producer Jeff Clapp, uh, who I got to meet. Um, is it? Uh, it's Jeff. Yeah, Jeff Clapp. Uh, I met him actually at the crowdsourcing. He got a free ticket. Um, executive producer says, what was the impact of the launch conference, and specifically what has happened since then? Yeah. Take a little break from the product. Yeah, so um, before we went on the stage with launch, we had a couple different Your presentation firms. sucked, by the way. Well, the originally. first one, I did that on purpose. You though, are Jason. such a nah, gangster nah, show. Remember nah, what I told I him? Remember. Like, you're I'm not giving you a slot. Yeah, no. Nah. I, I Thank you for going to yes. bat for me. So I've hosted 300 episodes of TV. I wasn't going to reveal my cards in front of the other candidates there. Oh, and was that what was I, I, happening? Two things. The other was, and I... Tyler uh, we called had, me. We had a call. Goes, yeah. Get your act together. I'm like, <laughs> well, no, no. What happens is, just so people know the dynamic, there's 50 companies that have to be prepared. Mm -hmm. And unlike some other conferences, we actually prepare the people. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you saw, did you see that terrible TechCrunch? Yes. TechCrunch oh disrupt God. presentation where the guy got up stage and said, yeah. nothing. L Lumiere. Lumiere, and they were yeah. just, and I, the kid's a smart kid. I think yeah. I met him. We met him at somewhere. And, and he, um, it's not. It just the weird thing is that it was not his, really his. Fault. It wasn't his. Are fault. we drinking haterade now? It's, it's not a haterade. No, 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 no. I just we're saying maybe a little haterade. Let me take a sip of that. Oh, this no, is delicious you know haterade. My, my thought is when I saw that, and I don't know how many of nobody the ones that prepared you saw. him. No, not just that, but I've seen much worse in the rehearsals. Yes, and that he is not that far off from a lot of people who ended up doing really well on stage. Yes, of course, because they just need to be sat down and forced I to do it. I would have loved. But to you see remember, him. I mean, Mike. I know, Mike never even showed up for the rehearsals at Tech Retreat. Yeah. We did it all ourselves. I would have loved to seen yeah. his presentation done correctly, pro properly. Yeah. Yes, I felt. I felt for the kid. And actually, yeah. Paul Carr was like, "Are is this a joke?" Yeah. Paul Carr yeah. said, and he's a tech cruncher. Yeah. He said, "Like, what is this a joke yeah, or I something?" Know. But Paul, Paul was hilarious. Yes, I mean, he laughed it off. Yeah, I mean, it was well, Sarah great. Lacey then lashed into them. Yep. And it's like, Sarah, why are you lashing into the company? You should be lashing into TechCrunch for not preparing them. I see. I, I liked Paul's humor in the whole thing. It, well, yeah, Paul's sort of at, guy. the, at the guy's expense. But. Yeah, whatever. Okay. But so, I dreamed of demoing it long. I'm sorry, a, d a demo. Right. right. But 20 grand, forget about it. So I have to thank you. My team thanks you. Oh. Giving us a platform. For a startup, we're very scrappy. We're doing this yeah. thing as inexpensively as well, possible. Well, it's better than demo anyway, because it's better high quality people there. But I, I really tell us, like he wants too. to know about the experience. Yeah, so, so it was great. So we had um, what's happened since? We had the potential to announce uh, bridge funding on stage at the conference, which uh -huh. I, that made us really proud because we built this for a year and a half in secrecy, right? No one right. knew what I was doing. I actually moved out of San Francisco to get out of the bubble. I wanted to do something new, LA, a little warmer. Yeah, sure. And sure. what I really like is uh, LA, it seems to have. Um, money coming in for actual products, right? right. Whereas San Francisco, you're, you're living on a dream and VC yeah. and bubble. So I wanted to get away, came down here. Um, you had a great venue for us. And um, since then, the VC gave us great credibility. Wait, you're saying you announced the bridge funding on stage? Did you get the bridge we, we funding? Wanted, from we, wanted, th we had opportunity to that, but we did uh, not do that, yeah. right? Because we built this in secrecy, we didn't really know how well it was going to resonate. And during our presentation, we got like four rounds of applause. We kept getting stopped. In the I remember of the that, right, when you started showing, like, I can attend. Because it was such an open, extensible platform, I think it really appeals to the crowd. When the, Tyler always makes this note, and it's a really important note for presentations, you don't have to be explicitly explaining it to the crowd. Just give them enough so that they can start dreaming of what yeah. it can do, right? How do you sort of phrase that? You, have, you had a way of Make phrasing it. Make it yours or whatever. Yeah, you have to impregnate the imagination in the observer. Yeah. Right, so yeah. you get them, yeah. you know, yeah. going, oh, what about this, yes. what about that? Yes. And then if you can then... If they say, oh, I wonder if you can do X, and right. then now a minute or two later, yes. you actually say, and you can do X, yep. now you've threaded the needle because you've yep. gotten their attention or whatever. You did that many times yeah. with the sort of putting the Bluetooth headset in the child's bag. And Google Voice forwarding when you walk in your office, it quits yes. forwarding your cell phone. So oh, that's we a great example, so too, right? proud. Of so that like, example was you put... You tag your office. Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. You walk in your office, now your desk phone starts ringing. You have to explain this stuff slower and more clear uh, because you, you just, like, oh, you I'm tag. So, I'm you, so freaking excited. I know, <laughs> but you're so smart. You, you have no half the audience is lost. You tag yeah, the Wi-Fi network name yeah. of your office. Tagging is just kind of a cute term that we came up right. with. So when your phone 
C's. gets with C's Mahalo, Wi-Fi. you know, Wi-Fi. It says Jason's at Mahalo. Yeah. Stop sending to his phone, send to his desk yeah. phone with Google Voice, and your product can do yeah. that. So we just added the extensibility at Google I.O., so now people can develop their own apps inside of it. And our first oh, test wow. app was an email client. I bet you would love this. When you drive up and park, your Wi-Fi on your phone sees the office. Sure. And you can have an email blast go out to your whole team I'm saying, at the office. Daddy's home. Time to go to work. Mm. Ooh, can I have it play the Darth Vader Imperial March when I vote? <laughs> their up? devices. That, you can have it do it on yours, but. No, no, uh, I'd like to play it oh, on their yeah. devices. Oh, just oh, or, on the overhead speaker. Overhead, yeah, we can do that. That's bom, total. You know, bom, we can do some bom, integration. Bom, bom, bom. I think that's what plays in people's heads anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was, the launch conference was a great venue. Um, we didn't want right. to announce any funding. We've had some VC meetings. But it seems like I'm, uh, I keep educating VCs on this whole idea of proximity as a service. Yeah. We took location wait, services. Wait, 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 wait. Before you get on that, we were at South by Southwest. Oh, this is great. This is great. <laughs> and Tim Draver walks by. Well, before that. Yeah. So um, we're talking with oh AT and T. AT and T. Oh, so this, AT and T's innovation guy yeah. is going on about cool stuff. He's all, do you know any? Maybe you. Can... But you guys were hanging out. No, 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 yeah. I was, well, they, oh, Tyler, you guys are no, on no, BFF Tyler, now. Tyler was hanging out with AT and T guy. The AT and T guy at South by Southwest says. What's the coolest technology you've seen here? Tyler as he goes, walks nothing. By. I haven't seen anything cool. And then I walk up, she goes, wait a minute. Day's technology is seconds, the coolest. Seconds later. Yeah, of course. I love yeah. serendipitous Brilliant. moments, yeah. too. So and we're then Tim Draper walks by, and, no, he's, no, like, and he's like, <laughs> oozing all over. Yeah, it was unbelievable. So, of course. Tim Draper's got yeah. this big, huge pile of money yeah. that he's got nothing to do with. Yeah. And it got even better, because Jess, his daughter, a good friend of mine, she walks up. She goes, Daddy, do you know Dave? Who, Tim Draper's daughter? Yeah. yeah. And uh, Jess Draper goes, of course I know Dave. He saved my life. I wonder if Tim Draper's daughter, uh, Tim Draper takes credit for his daughters, like, uh, when she gets 100 on an exam. I always found Tim Draper was taking credit for all the entrepreneurs. He's always taking credit for entrepreneur success. He's like, oh my God, Skype, we sold too early. Uh, Actually, he was right about that. Anyway, keep going. So his daughter comes up, Daddy, do you know Dave? Yeah. And um, <laughs> he, she goes, he saved my life. And Tim looks at me, he goes, you saved my daughter's life? I kind of did. Uh, yeah. um, and he goes, well, he has this great technology. She goes, well, I don't know about his technology. He goes, you saved my daughter's life. And I said, we did not take any investment from them. Um, we're still funding this ourselves. But I said, Tim, the investment just went from millions to priceless. <laughs> <laughs> but it was all like these great serendipitous Question moments. from producer Anthony Otenzi. He says, does Newair have plans to expand into fixed location devices that uh, would, for example, allow a business to automatically check a user into Force Reagan Wild with permission of yeah, course? Yeah, that's a great question. So we built the technology and launched it on Android because it's super hackable, right? We get huh. low-level access to the radios. The APIs are such that you can really do not everything you want, but a lot of good stuff in there. So next is we're going to start working with partners in um, routers or video on demand adapters, things like that. So we can put the technology on either side of the equation, either on the fixed side or the wireless side. Okay, so wireless being uh, untethered. Untethered, right. Or the fixed meaning some fixed sort of means, access point. It means wired, but just not moving around wired. That's right. Yeah. Got it. So it's not actually a fixed cable, it's just the Wi-Fi router at your local pink bank. That's right. But it's gonna, so those now, deals like, are longer, right? Do you think to, that's going to happen? Do you think I'm going to, if I walk in, they're going to check me in? Or yeah. is it, it going to send me a little alert saying, so if it, you check in right now and share it on Facebook, you get a dollar off? Jason, I think checking in is so 2009. We're trying to eliminate the check-in. What I want to know is who's around you, how many of your crew, how often do you spend time together, and when you do, you walk by a wine store, if it's just the two of you, it might be buy one glass, get one glass free. But if uh, it's five of you, it might be, hey, we've got half price bottles. Oh, I we see. have a meal special. So you're, oh, wow. So interesting. So this is a huge, huge idea, right? We're just getting the training wheels on oh. with the mobile device. That is device. really bizarre. So we could say, like, oh, wow, 17 people in your Facebook social graph or your Foursquare or your Gowala graph, whatever, are in Santa Monica right now. Yeah. And it alerts all 17 and says, um, this restaurant is offering you buy one, get one free entrees if you bring six or more people. Or say, you know, it's a, an ad hoc gathering, right? So you guys, a couple of you go to a bar mm -hmm. after work, Friday. Right. Then a couple more people show up, then a couple more people show up. So it starts alerting people that you're there automatically. Maybe not, maybe not alerting. Maybe so is that in some way what color is doing? Like so, this, pro this proximity question. network? Yeah, so what they're trying to do is they're trying to get you to take pictures and then build an ad hoc network based upon doing something. Right. What I'm trying Instagram to do- Instagram into social yeah, media. Yeah, and then there's Path, you know, Dave's thing. There's all these things that are trying to do it with photos, but photo sharing, uh, there's some stuff I want to be public that goes to Flickr. Some stuff I want private of my friends that goes to Facebook. Other stuff, you know, sits on a hard drive. I don't even send the private to stuff to Facebook because I don't trust them with it, but I send it to Pat now. Right. Uh, but what I'm trying to do is not really do things with images. I mean, that could be an application layer on top of what we do. We could build color. Well, you're in 10 a platform. Minutes. 
what, what I'm trying to do is I want humans to connect. Mm -hmm. I don't want to check in. I want you to have knowledge of your surroundings. I want you to know when you walk into a room, what friends are there, what frenemies are there, who you should meet, connections of connections. I think that LinkedIn is it true that Cisco world, is going to buy you? Oh, that'd be great. That no, was no, a question no, they're selling, they're that's selling Paisano. everything. Paisano. I can't believe they killed the flip too. It's so sad. I know it was. Right I it seems like an accounting thing. Out. Like somebody, some accounting wonk was like, right if we write were, this off, we're going to get big off the HD flip. And it makes no sense. Why wouldn't they? And why wouldn't they spin it off? It sounded like they needed to write off the 500 million for some like they probably said oh if we write this off we can like bring today, in a, yeah. we can bring in a billion dollars from overseas without paying tax so let's mm -hmm. just bring the billion in cash over instead of and if they sold it for 100 million it would have been yeah. like people do weird there's some weird business story that will come out eventually of why they did it it might actually be re repatriating overseas uh, stuff um, but you were saying about linkedin well so linkedin they have a way and there's bump there's ways that when yeah. you're at conferences to find people I really want this stuff to happen automatically, right? When I, I was at uh, Bambi's Vader last night, and the, I'm trying to what, work. What did he just say? Vader's TV had Vader's a party. Oh, Vader TV you had a party. You know who won that was? I don't um, know who this is. Vader er TV. Eric know. Waldman's iPhone losing thing won that. Oh, Tech Track. Tech Track. Yeah, mm -hmm. which um, Originate Labs, the group that built my software, yep. also built Tech Track. Yep. Mm. So great team at OriginateLabs.com. All right, let's do an Ask Jason. Ah, I got the crew. They weren't even, they're not ready. I'm, I'm testing my new crew. There we go. Wow, we're getting such. I, ha I have to say, I just love having all these producers because they're so engaged in writing good questions. Just right before we do the Ask Jason, a great question uh, came in from the Ustream chat from Domain Noob, who's a super fan for sure. Uh, he's been watching since the beginning. Um, any calls from the FBI or CIA? So far, not. Um, we're keeping this very social. Like, if you have a yeah. profile on LinkedIn, if you have a Foursquare for Twitter, you're but already it's, putting it's, it's that content out. It's not open source. And you have to be. Your software is not open source, right? No, I sit in the middle. Like we're we're a telecom switch, ah, right? So we are the connector. But, but wouldn't this technology? Uh, would you agree that this technology is already in use for surveillance? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, when OJ was driving down the 405 in the white Bronco, they were using cell tower data to find his trajectory. Right. Right. With our right. technology, we're looking at radio waves, which are typically line of sight. So you're in the room. We're not at a cell layer. We're at a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth layer. So I could look across the room in your office here and see someone. I could see Tyler, and I could walk up to him and say, hey, I'm Dave Matthews, what's going on? Or I could use my radio to sniff this out. So it's already, you know, you can do this manually all day long. Okay, who do we have on the phone with us? It's Daniel here. Can you hear me? Daniel, we can hear you. Daniel, uh, you have a question for us? Let's hear it, Daniel. Where are you calling yes. from? Yes, I'm calling from London, UK. 10 p.m. right here. Oh, 10 p.m.? Okay, so you've got yeah. 10 people over your house watching the show. That's great. No, just my wife, actually. Oh, okay, very good. <laughs> is she a fan or no? Uh, she is a fan officially from today, yeah. <laughs> oh, very good, okay. I'll take it, I'll take it. Uh, okay, yeah. so you have a question for us? Let's hear it. Yeah, um, I'll just give you a bit of a background just so you can relate to the question as well a bit better. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, um, I was introduced to this guy. He's uh, a CEO of a fund which invests in renewable energy sources. And uh, he said, you know what, I've got this idea, I want to set up a price comparison website. So I thought, hold up a second, that's not really the area that I usually invest in. So anyways, I said, yeah, I'm a user experience architect, um, I know the you know the digital industry quite well, um, I'll help you out. And he said, well, that's great, because I've got money, but I don't have time to do it. Um, so here I am, I'm good with the design side of things, I'm good in terms of user experience, but uh, the one part I'm not good in is developing. So... I kind of thought I'll drop you guys a line, especially you, Jason, and the experience you've got. Um, where would I even start looking for good developers that have experience in the price comparison uh, sector? Right. Okay. So um, we get this question all the time. I am a non-technical co-founder. I'm a semi-technical. I need somebody super technical to work on my project. There's obviously not a lot of uh, technical talent just out there. Now, being outside of Silicon Valley means there's going to be more. And I like to pick apples from the orchard, not the bushel. Less chance of getting a worm, in my experience, uh, in the apple. So I like to go to the university or go to somebody out of school or go to somebody who's just getting their first job or maybe their second. Um, and giving them a chance and saying, I'm looking for an entry-level person. And then you have to deal with some nonsense. Maybe they don't understand how to do certain things. Or maybe they might do something unprofessional, not show up on time, whatever. I'd rather deal with that set of problems than deal with, oh, my God, I've got to compete against Google, Twitter, and Facebook for this incredibly high-level talent. I would rather uh, develop talent in a market like this. So my suggestion would be find somebody who's got 
60% of the scale, but 100% of the potential of what you want to do and develop that talent. What are your thoughts? So I love uh, the social web, right? right? Looking at LinkedIn, people that have done prior sure. work. Clearly. Um, look on Twitter, use Twitter search all day long and try and uh, engage in communities. Like uh, with Boxy, we took open source software and then we had 30 developers from around the world. We got them all together in Amsterdam for a developer conference. They'd never been together before. Hmm. And then we took the best of that crew and hired a half a dozen of them to do boxing. So doing a social event, hosting something, can be a great way to actually put the honey out and let the bees right. come to you. Yep. Um, that's a great, great suggestion. And I forgot we're actually doing that here. My guys host the, um, we wanted to get people who knew how to scale servers here. So we started hosting the scale uh, event. We hosted Django event here, and we hosted the big data event here for Cassandra or Hadoop. Mm -hmm. So I just tell people, hey, host these events at Mahalo. I'll buy 200 bucks worth of pizza and soda, sure. or 100 bucks, and we'll get the we'll get the speakers. But holy cow, did that work? Um, so yeah, I think building content around what you're doing. Actually, if you wrote a blog called, uh, you know, comparison shopping blog, or you know something about that, or the future of shopping, the future mm -hmm. of shopping. That's it. Well, the future of price. You know, one of those two. And you, you make a blog, and every day you write one blog post about that, and you link to different companies that have worked on stuff in the past or the present. Then when you email people, they have somewhere to go and read. And they go, oh, this guy is smart. He's writing and he's thinking about intelligent things. Domain ex expertise. Right. You want, you want to foster I mean, wait, that. Listen, people want to get involved a lot of times in things I'm doing because they either watch This Week in Startups or read the newsletter. And those are my little media things where they get my Twitter account. I have all this, media, this huge media footprint out there, and it just brings people to me. I can do meetings all day long. That's why the launch conference was so successful in the first year was because people had come on the radar already. I didn't have to go... I didn't have to pull. I didn't have to put, uh, push people in here. They they, they were drawn in. Yeah. Was pull not push something like that? Is that helpful? That was very helpful. Thank Tyler, you very your much. Thoughts. If you Fantastic. have some funding, um, and you can present a compelling idea, I might know somebody who might want to work on it. Oh, you might actually have a tech lead. Yeah. And then other people like have started this stuff where they're like, oh, I'm going to start a website where it's going to match tech people and you know founders. Listen, it's hard for a reason. Wait, there's a reason why it is hard to do this kind of stuff. Um, the reason it's hard um, is because you have competition, and not everything, it's like, there were two really hard problems, and there's three hard problems in, in startups. One is getting a great domain name, two is getting technical people to work on it, um, and three is getting funding. It's really easy to get funding right now, but those first two are still hard. Yep. And as more funding becomes available, the first two get harder and harder, because there's only a limited number of supply of great names, there's a limited supply of great people. <laughs> in this market, when people come to me and say, I've already raised $300,000 for this startup, I'm like, who cares? I mean, I could, I could literally say I'm starting this thing and it's going to get $300 million right now. You know, it's like yep. raising money in a hot market is easy. You've yep. done it. Um, raising money in a down market, that says something. And in a down market, if this was 2004 and 2005, you'd raise money. There'd be people everywhere to go work for you. Yep. I mean... That was the thing about 2005 was a bunch of people hanging out there and it was like not everybody can work at Flickr or Blogger or Gawker or Weblog Zinc or like the half or Delicious. There were only like 10 companies then. Now it's like, oh my God, there's 10,000. Well, there's literally 1,000 companies with money in the bank yeah, to I'm, hire you. you know, the worst part is all me too companies, right? I really want to see some more innovation. That's why I, I consulted for 10 years helping out other CEOs because I really wanted to do something that was breakout and something that no one had ever thought of or heard of before. Uh, okay, well done. Uh, Fantastic. Tyler, anything else? Good. Okay. Uh, we'll see you when we're over in London for the next Open Angel Forum. Excellent. I'm looking forward to it. Actually, okay. That, me too. It brings, me, brings me to a question Sorry. real quick. Yeah. Just, um, um, are, you, are you guys planning on doing anything in Europe um, so for the Twist show uh, in general? Well, right now we have Twist uh, Paris, uh, which is the big, largest chapter, and so we have to make a trip out there this year uh, at yeah. some point. And then we have... Um, the UK chapter is the second biggest chapter in Europe, and um, we are definitely going to come do an open answer forum in London, and that trip will go to London, and then we'll take the tube over to Paris, which I never took the train over, but I think that'd be fun, because I'm it's overdue for fun. a Paris trip. So I'm thinking maybe October, we just book a week, Tyler. You want to just go for three days and three days? We do three plus three? Mm -hmm. And then maybe we could go to the south of France or the other for a day? Mm, honeymoon. Maybe we hit the Saint-Rémy or something <laughs> like that. That's something romantic, you know? Maybe we go antiquing. <laughs> <laughs> Go antiquing in scooters. I went antiquing in San Remi, and it was a wonderful experience. My wife's like, "This is years ago." She's, oh, we can. I said, "Let's drive from Barcelona to the south of France." She said, "Oh, we can go antiquing in San Remi," and I was like, 
That's exactly what I was thinking. Oui, oui, oui. Ah oui, c'est bon. Ah, tout le monde. Okay, we'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Fantastic. Thank yes, you very we will much. do something there. We will do something. Thank there. you very much, especially for the super fans. All right. Uh, so. Um, Nothing like a lull on live video broadcast. It's the worst, worst transition ever into an ad. <laughs> no, it's not an ad. ad. It's not an ad. I'm just looking in here and making sure I didn't. Is there anything? All right, let's do the news for Lon. Bring Lon in. Ah, I got you. There's no news today. It's for your interview. Um, all right, so there where... Is, there is Google Wallet, though, which is... Yeah, so let's talk about that, because that is yeah. coming up in the chat room and stuff like that. Um, Google Wallet comes out. Yep. Obviously, it's a whole big thing. The people who are there from PayPal, da 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 What's the story with that? Yeah, so the whole idea is you're using NFC chips, which are inside of credit cards. They're at, um, right now, today, mm -hmm. right? And if you go to New York, you can pay your taxi cab just by holding your credit card up to the, the reader. Yeah. There's several retailers, but that very Does it work? It works. I like it better because the MagStripe well, always blows out. How come my American Express doesn't have that? Well, mine does. Depends on the type, right? I have the blue, and the blue has... I have a blue. It's got a ring and well, a chip what about around my, it. I ha, oh, so maybe I do have that. But what about my Starwood? Why doesn't my Starwood? Can you? Can the, you so can they you? don't. They don't have that yet. It's, it's ah. expensive, right? These cost me a dollar per tag. This costs a dollar. Yeah, because it's the NFC. It's the latest technology, right? Uh. RFID has been around, so those cost a nickel. Mm -hmm. Now they're working on printable antennas. These are actually metal foil antennas. So, right, the dream. So at a of dollar, this, this isn't like you can put it on a um, toothpaste, but you could put it on. A storefront. A storefront, exactly. And that's what's happening. That's what we're seeing. But what's going on with the NFC I mean, on Dolly phones... You put it on a credit card. Come on. Cheapskates. Yeah. But, I mean, it'll happen. Yeah. Um, but what Google's trying to do is eliminate the card, right? right? They want you to have all this data. And there's a pin mechanism. So um, you w wave your wand of your phone next to a Verifone, VeriSign terminal. Then it says, ah, uh, there's a little handshake back and forth. It says, we know you're this person. We know you're going to be charged this amount. Enter a pin. You key in your pin. And then that authorizes your Visa transaction. So this infrastructure needs to be built out, right? And there's only one phone in America with NFC, and that's the Nexus S, which, by the way, you can get that at Best Buy now for like 150 bucks. Mm. Um, so Sprint was part of this partnership as well. And um, in the future, we're going to have 12 Android phones that have NFC capabilities. When does it come to iPhone? Well, that's the thing. So there's four different standards mm. with NFC, and, and Jobs, he doesn't want to play the battle war, right? Blu-ray is still not in an Apple product. Because uh, we think that after the Blu-ray HD DVD war, um, he would have said, he okay, still, he's still he not putting... He still hasn't done that. You're but right. I think he's going but nobody into, cares anymore. Yeah, I think so, too. I think he's going to digital distribution. Um, the other so problem, maybe he scuttled the Blu-ray because he realized he, he doesn't sell Blu-rays. And so... Well, it's a Sony IP and this whole... Right, but Karatsu. I mean, so he basically uses the IP... You know, and the, and the standard wars of... Because the standard war is over now, Blu-ray yeah, 1. Right. But he basically says, I'm not putting Blu-ray in because I don't want you playing Blu-ray movies. I want you doing... It's just another example of yeah. him using his market he, dominance. He does tunnel vision. I mean, He's and, got and the this. FCC and all these guys are giving Google a hard time. It's like oh. Apple is just so nefarious in what they do. I mean, can we all just reflect on that for a second? They Apple does not allow Blu-ray players in their machines. Can You, you can buy a third-party Blu-ray mm -hmm. player yep. and plug it in. Of course. But... That must, if, if he allowed Blu-ray in their laptops, and he allowed it in their desktops, and made it the standard, it would have cost $100 to put in or something, I'm sure. It's not that expensive. Yep. Wouldn't Blu-ray, the, the DVDs of Blu-rays would be selling like hotcakes or more. It would make an impact. And do most PCs come standard with that, a Blu-ray Yeah, the, the high-end PCs, yeah. yeah. I haven't bought a PC in years, that though. Is, so. Isn't that just fascinating and mind-boggling that he can get away with anything? But he wants you to stay in his tunnel vision of iTunes, right? Right. You have to stay in his digital distribution. Right. And yeah, think yeah. about with Pixar. And, it's I mean, just so ridiculous. And Netflix growth. The fact that he put Netflix in the Apple TV, kudos. I couldn't believe he did that in the, the black, the, the new second Why gen Apple TV. Why hasn't he bought Netflix yet? Because I guess, what's his name? Reed Hastings doesn't want to sell. If, Reed ha if he gave Reed Hastings the position of president of Apple and then let Reed become the CEO, would that be a good move? I don't know if it's the Someday right... Someday people... See, if I make enough crazy predictions like this on the show, one of them is going to be right, right at some point, and then we're going to be able to go back to this moment in time and say, Jason said Reed Hastings would be a what, great Al CEO. How is Apple thinking, or how do you think Apple's thinking about this Google Wallet thing? Because Apple has all the credit card numbers. Yep. Yeah, they've already got the app store. They must right. be freaking yeah. out about this. Well, no, because it's going to take way too long for this infrastructure to be built out. There's only one phone today that uses the technology. The technology's fragmented. It's just... No, but I could see people... I mean, I think... How's I, Apple going to try and counter the Google Yeah, I, I could see people making the decision to buy a phone based on this. Oh, yeah. 
Um, I don't think so. The wall? I'm, I'm talking about, yeah, I'm thinking like nerds and stuff like that. People in our circle would. Yeah, it's still just too geeky, right? This I call this my um, my little nerd bait at Google yeah. I.O. And not, there's like seven second, phones though. there if that I, had. If I could go in Starbucks and I could just go yeah. with my, my Android phone, and I'm a Starbucks person like he is and go twice a day, yeah. that's going to be appealing to me. So and if they make it, especially if they're sending and, and, deals to you through the phone and the loyalty yeah, I mean, this, I don't. Yeah, I think you know, you're underestimating Apple it. Apple could do this with Wi-Fi right now. When you load iTunes on your iPhone in the store, it knows that the song that's playing in the store is right here. You can do mm -hmm. one click buy, right? So just like New why, Air, why aren't they doing that? Yeah, why did the iPhone? Remember the iPhone app that they Starbucks showed and then they pulled that would let you order while you're online? That wasn't theirs. Someone, that wasn't theirs. Somebody that else made theirs. that. Someone it was a third party. That, yeah. But they wound up pulling it. But yeah. why hasn't Apple made that? deal with Starbucks to let you order while you're online. Apparently, Apple has the patent for any ordering on the phone. Right. They do have that patent. I've never seen that. I love that they licensed the one-click patent as well. So you could do one-click music, one-click coffee. <laughs> Wait a second. They're licensing the one-click? The Amazon patent. The Amazon yeah, patent. Yeah. They are licensing yeah, it. Yep. Yeah. So they, Amazon, what happened is Amazon, because that patent's bogus. I mean, right. it's such a bogus patent. Like, by the way, when I put a quarter in, it's also one touch when I buy. <laughs> You know, like I put the quarter in, I haven't touched anything yet, and then I press I want a Coca-Cola. That's one yeah. touch. Patents, you have 65 of them. Yeah. Are patents BS? So, um, at Sling, yes or no? So not really, right? Okay. With Sling, we had a couple patents. We uh -huh. bought a couple. And Sony was coming after us because they have a thing called, not anymore, but location-free TV. Sony was going to our retailers, Best Buy, Circuit Cities, CompUSA's, and saying Sling is infringing on our patents. So the retailers came to us and said, what's going on? Turns out... Sony had no patents. We had protection. So we were able to go back to those vendors and say, no, no, no. We're not infringing anything. We have our own IP. We have our own. Ah, so here so are it's our a patents. defensive strategy. So you, here's, our pat, here's our patents. If they had such a problem with their patents, why are they going to you, not the patent office? Bingo. And that is how you do it. Yep. I now, use it as a defensive strategy. Uh, what do you think of business patents? That, that nonsense. So like, business method, like this, like price in line. 99, 2000, yeah. this was the, all the patents that were going through business the office. Patents. Right. Like, I, I'm going to, like, Groupon is a business patent. Right. Just give me a break. Right. Well, so there are Can Groupon patent that or no? I don't think they have any they IP, have IP, but I don't know. They're, I mean, they're just, like, growing so quickly. Who has time yeah. to do IP? Sure. And that's the way I am now. I want to launch quickly. I want to get a, a little bit of core IP because that's obviously important mm -hmm. as a defensive mm -hmm. strategy. Yeah. But I'm more into the iterate quickly, come up with innovative uh technologies, and then open it. Let yeah. people license the technology. So that's where we're going. Hmm. Uh, so patents are for defensible. Do you, if you're an inventor, when should you consider getting a patent? So before you launch. We Pre-launch, pre -launch, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's expensive. It's 20 grand. It's five years. Some of my patents have taken 10 years to grant. Wait, it's 20 grand to apply. Well, that's like having an attorney write it, do the research, and what's called the prosecution. So over the course of these two, four, five, six, however many years it takes to grant, hmm. Your attorney has to argue with the patent office and say, the patent office will say, oh, no, no, Jason, we can't allow that patent. This has been done 17 times to Sunday. And your attorney has to go in. And sometimes they do it over the phone. Sometimes I send them to D.C., do it face-to-face. -face, say, no, 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 here's the difference. Here's the nuance between this patent that exists. So it's a game. It's a gamble, right. It's A uh, game or a gamble? A well, negotiation? It's a, it's a total negotiation, yeah. So the better you're negotiated, the greater the chances? Well, what happens is you have to take your claims. You want it to be as wide as the world is. And they're like, nope, nope, nope. They start to draw the blinders in. So your patents are... I have are a, a patent attorney that come on. We we'll, should do a we'll discussion. About, what about, um, what about uh, former Microsoft guy who is... Myra Holt. Yeah. Uh, what about Nathan? Nathan, yeah. Nathan yeah. yeah. What I love... I what, mean, I told Nathan, this, you're, this feels... Uh, at the D conference, I told him. Who, by the way, is one of the sweetest guys. I like, like Nathan a lot. Yeah, I mean, he's, like, he's a very sweet guy. He's brilliant. Yeah, but brilliant guy. I'm like hiring a bunch of attorneys full time and spending $100 million a year, or whatever you're spending, having think tank sessions to patent stuff that you have no intention of making sounds like being a troll to me. If you make a patent, should you have a specific window of time in which you have to build a product? That's amazing that you don't, right? I've got speaker light bulbs patented. I've got all kinds of stuff that I'm waiting for technology. Wait, what do you have? Speaker light bulbs. I fell through my ceiling when I was putting speakers in my whole house audio system. Uh -huh. And when I fell through the ceiling, I looked back up at the hole that I made and the light right next to it. I'm like, this is stupid. I could just unscrew the light bulb. And if I had a way to send audio over the electricity, which I can with HomePlug, right. um, and then LED lighting. I had to wait on that. These little things. This is the dilemma of an inventor. So I, you're in, you invented, yep. so to speak, yep. a I, process for sending audio over electric wires. current that would be played by light bulbs. Yep. 
No, uh, it's a light bulb. It's a speaker that has a fixture on the end what is that you can plug it? Well, into he said he doesn't know socket. because the technology's not there yet. Well, now, LED, I invented this in uh, 2003, right? And now the LEDs are capable of it. Has somebody since invented your not actual, yet, has, yet, nobody's so, actually done it. No. But what's going to happen is somebody will actually come out with a product, yep. and then you will say, hey, I had the idea first, right. and I was prescient and rich enough yeah. to actually spend the 20 Gs on it. Rich mentally, only rich mentally. <laughs> That's very important. Where the 20 Gs come? Um, well, you got a friend, it's over right? time. It's over time. Right, right. Oh, so the, how much does it cost to file the initial patent then? Um, depends on the attorney, but a lot of it's front loaded, right? Because if you read a patent, they're great if you want to go to sleep. By the I want to do a patent. Let's do a patent on the air one day. Let's well, let's do a patent right now. Okay. Uh, so first, we have to come up with yeah. you have to come up with something that's different, and the fact that you're doing it on air immediately negates the ability for you to patent it. What? No one, only us in this room. So could we um, cut the cameras? Cut, uh, the, cut the audio. Right. No, no, so, okay. so it has to be a tight group of people. No one else can know about it. Right. And then once we come up with the ideas, then it has to be researched. And you can do this all day long, but it is the most tedious work. All right. You'll so ever electric do. car, we electric car plus. You, you can't, you're negating your IP. Electric car plus. You're doing a, a vent. What SWAT plus? Uh, do a swag and an electric <laughs> car plus what? Electric car. You need, work plus, on this with your producers off air. This is, what else would be electric car plus solar, right? Solar electric right, car plus. Been done. I know, but but we gotta get one more vector in there. <laughs> What's another vector? We can go the Z. Maybe another thing, Tyler. We could do. Can we do something else like again, a borrow, algae, like an algae, like car? an algae of solar? Yeah. So the solar powers the algae, and the algae powers the electric car. You know what I love? A patent that BMW has. What? I love the Z Germans. They take one thing and they make it better and better and better, like Mercedes, BMW. So they don't innovate outside of what they know. So they have a patent Why is on, there an algae power car? Go ahead. They have a patent on when a car is accelerating, the alternator turns off. So remember in the old yeah. days, your, your air compressor for your air conditioning would turn off to give more power for your hot rod. So they do this on BMWs. It only turns on the alternator when you're braking and when you're under no load. Right. So that's a great example of a patent. Now, Tesla has so much IP that they're licensing it to the smart electric car. To, um, yes. And Toyota's doing the same thing with cross So they licensing. just have a huge library of patents. So they're, just, right. they're sitting there every day as they actually build a product yep. and say, what would be the next logical five steps? Let's patent those five okay. steps. Yep. Do you think that this, this needs to be patent reform as an inventor? Uh, no, because I make my little mice nuts of uh, money to fund my other companies based upon licensing. The existing patents. Yeah. But uh, just if you a were selfish reason. No, OK. But if you were starting your career today, yeah. And you're looking at facing down this massive patent people yeah. like IBM, Microsoft, and Nathan Miravold, who are yeah. the top three patent people. HP is like four people who are like the top patent, patent people. They're filing how many IBM, thousands? Every year, I think it's like four, six thousand some odd patents granted a year. And they're like winning year by year by year. All and right, think about it. when does IBM had relevance for any of us in this room? It's unbelievable. Right? But it's so inside the chips and the hard If you were an drives. inventor coming in today and you were 20 year old, Dave Matthews, would you want there to be a clause in patents that you had seven years to execute on them, and then the patent? Yeah, probably. Yeah, you but, would. But um, okay. more, more so with, with kids today. Those kids today. <laughs> they can iterate so quickly. They well, have gigahertz thing. computers like, in their pockets. How long is the patent lifetime? 20 years. Which at the time that was invented. 20 years from what? When issuing? issuing from the yeah. point of issuing. But when so your patent out, for electric light bulbs. You spend 20 Gs Speaker on it. Speaker light bulbs. I'm Speaker not Edison. Bulbs. As much as I want to be yes, Thomas Alexa. Alvin Edison. <laughs> you have invented a way to send electricity over the light grid. <laughs> <laughs> um, your, your speaker light phones. Yeah. Um, you sure you don't smoke weed? Anyway, your speaker <laughs> at light bulbs. Positive. That you did not develop while I you were I did prototypes. On, you did on, but you were not on hash at the time. You, um, I did not inhale. I did not inhale that. What, when did that get published? Uh, 2006 or seven. So you have to get by 2027. Somebody's yeah. actually got to do it, yeah. and if somebody does it in 2025, There's they got to pay you years. a license for two years, yeah. and you have to work out your license deal with them. Sort of. So what happens if they don't license? Then you get treble damages. So you actually want people to infringe and make be very successful with the product, uh -huh. and then you go back later and say, I want three x whatever the license is. Oh, you get. Yeah, which oh, is so and what is the license fee normally? It's all different, right? It depends that's, on that's if you how have do they the patent. So you get three times the license. So well, look what NTP with what I really hated was that patent trolls, the NTP lawsuit, which shut down the BlackBerry network, um, almost shut down carriers because they went not only after the phone manufacturers but each of the cell operators in order to get the licensing for push email on mobile right. phones. I don't know enough about patents. Let's have an episode on patents because I feel like I'm, I feel like this is somewhere where I could be making money. 
and, and taking, <laughs> I feel like this is a missed opportunity for me yeah. and Tyler. Tyler and what I could be it's, having patent, we could be patent got, trolls. Uh, this is like flipping houses, right? This it is, is. It feels so like people by the time Tyler and I want to get in on this, it's probably over, right? It's right. peaked. We're on the downhill That's slope. True. Uh, all right, this has been an amazing episode. Continued. Oh, here's your award. Oh, thank you. Uh, congratulations. Big round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> and it's great. It's like a, it's a, it's a it. good looking this trophy. Is the, the team. I oh, gotta, yeah. where's, where's my camera? Camera Oh, one? flip it that way. Your camera C. Me, and me, you have where to where put it down here, just like you do with your phone, right. and tilt it. And you're going to look at that one. You could be easier yes. for you. Now just keep tilting. We got it. Oh, there we go. Ah. All right, this goes out. I got to thank my team. Yes. To they did Originate great job. Labs. These yes. guys, we love them. All right. Um, and yeah. uh, this will go down in history as the. Uh, the cheap award we made. It was like 50 bucks a thing. But hey, listen, yeah. we, you know, it's something. And uh, I want to give everybody one for participation, too, but that would get expensive. Yeah. Anyway, what a great event, and hopefully uh, you'll be back there next year launching something new. Awesome. Uh, Dave Matthews' continued uh, success, and if people want to get Tooth Tag, they just go to newair.com? Yeah, you can go to toothtag.net. Um, you New Air, I want, that's a joke of a name. I really wanted as many vowels as possible <laughs> in a name. I told you this when, you, when, yeah. I, when I met you about this. I was like, my God, you're such a genius and so terrible at getting yeah. domain names. It was like New Air. N -E it was French, German. A E R. Yeah. New I'm Air. I'm trying to be clever. It would take you seven, put this way, that's the 17th way somebody would ever spell New yeah. Air. So users can go to toothtag.net. Toothtag.net. Developers can go to proximityplatform.com. Oh my God. And, jeez, uh, how many domains you got, kid? Oh, I've got two. I'm going to just buy a domain and give it to you, okay? You're now, your company's now, now called Kakua.com, okay? <laughs> your company's now called 20.com. Spend 10 Gs on a domain name that people can remember, right? You cheap bastard. Why would you I, buy I am. Good? You're dollar cheap store about, Dave. You are dollar store Dave. You are <laughs> yep, so cheap know, about yep. domains. Unless it, if it You'll requires... drop 20 Gs on a patent, you but know you what? won't drop 10 Gs on a domain. Why? Because I've got a smart car that I've got all tricked out, and I'd rather spend my 20 grand you on something... You drive one of those smart cars? In, in San Fran. I keep oh, it up San there. Fran. And then I'd rather... You know, I've got a race car here in L.A. And what I'm, kind of race car you I'm have? M3. So I will spend money all day long if it requires fuel or power. I have every cell phone in my pocket. I call that birth control. Uh, um, <laughs> but, but I will not pay right. some jerk money for a domain. Uh, Paziano and Justin <laughs> Chat wants to know about Kickstarter and the dangers of putting an idea invention on there. Um, never put an idea out before you've executed it. That's just yeah. 101 entrepreneurship. I mean, don't talk about things you're going to do. Talk about things that you've done and that people can buy and spend money or invest in. Uh, of course, from executive producer Jeff and the Justin Chat, can you ask Jason what he thinks about Apple plus Square? Um, Square is going to be acquired by Apple, absolutely. That's just You it. think so? If they don't, uh, Apple is just stupid. I mean, I really like Square. I think it's very clever. They use the mic yeah. jack versus yeah. the Apple Dock connector because yeah. they don't have to pay the license, and now yeah. they're cross-platform. But I don't think they have anything that's innovative, really. I think that their product, though, is so well done and executed that they're yeah. going to just get tremendous market share. I think Jeff is uh, Jeff um, Jack is just Jack, a genius yeah. at producing a product that's simple and elegant and easy to use. And boy, that cash register in, a, yeah. in an iPad is a great idea. And you know, Apple's just not going to be focused on it enough. Yeah. Do you think Jack can be focused enough? He's back in the CEO realm of Twitter now. I think that they just gave him an extra, my belief is they gave him an extra 2% of the company. And he, uh, so he got, they gave him 100, I bet you they gave him $100 million to come back in and just make sure they don't screw it up. Hmm. It's a, basically a way for them to take the $5 billion company and make sure it doesn't turn into a $500 million company. Yeah. So by giving him $100 million in stock to just babysit yep. and make sure that the product doesn't get screwed up, which he's totally capable of doing, yep. It's a, it's, a, it's a downside protection by the VCs. Do you think Everybody they jumped shipping. the shark, though? Do you think Twitter, I don't see any growth. I don't, I'm kind of over it myself. I still use it. It's still critical for me. But I will say that the amount of people clicking on my links has dropped precipitously on a percentage basis. So yeah. I think people are waning from it. And I think that the t major problem they have is that they don't actually have their own media hosting. Mm. If they had media hosting and management, i.e., when I post a photo, they do it, not somebody else. Yep. When I post a video, they host it, not anybody else. And I know they were working on this, and they didn't want to deal with the server issues. But a third of Facebook's traffic is photos. Instagram yeah. is crushing it because of photos. TwitPig is crushing it because of photos. Wake up, people. Yep. We, media is what people, and so uh, this idea of like, oh, we're just going to load it. No, they should have a permalink page yep. for every image with tweets that are as comments. It's so obvious and so yeah, the, stupid the that friend they can't. friend feed, right? The whole the friend, friend feed, feed element. Just let people embed yeah. their media in Twitter and let there be a threaded discussion. Just those two features, and how many years have I been saying, mm -hmm. for the love of God, this is a message. I'm going to need a super friend to cut this. This is a message, because we lost our guy who was uh, cutting the videos. That's a whole other story. Um, <laughs> I can't wait to write my autobiography. It just gets better. Every every week I come to work, Jesus, it really, 
do we or do we not need to get a reality television show in here? Because <laughs> it literally gets crazier by the day. What time does the keg get here, by the way? Because I need a f***ing drink. Oh! oh. Man! <laughs> Almost made it to the end of the episode. I did that one on purpose. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, oh 20. Frack, 25. <laughs> no, you just did another 20? one. No, I didn't say it. I mouthed it. I didn't say it. Two. <laughs> Who's got a 20? Heard. Somebody got a 20? Two or three. Spot me a 20. Spot me a 20. You have to put it in on the moment. You have to get money from somebody. Spot me a 20. You got 20 on you? No. You like, can't spot me a 20? You didn't, yeah, you yeah, didn't yeah. pay me enough to come on here. <laughs> How many stages I got to give you, kid, before you spot me a 20, man? I gave you this stage. It's all good. I love entrepreneurs. That's what I do. Okay, here Dollar we go. Dollar Store Dave. There we go. Do Dollar Store Dave. Right, exactly. Um, um, anyway, thank you to Trotta. Thank you to Mailchimp. What if we have so much fun on the show? It's, it's like the funnest time of the week is this show. Then I get out and I gotta like face Mo. Jason, now that you're the CEO of this weekend, I feel super motivated because you're gonna finally see what contribution I'm making directly. I feel you didn't know exactly. Maybe I should be the GM of the business. Oh God, Mo. Muhammad. Ah, uh, Muhammad. All right, uh, this has been a great episode. We really need to update the approved sponsor list, even though we're sold out, to include the iFi, because I love the iFi. And I need to, I need your approved products. What are your favorite five products right now, tell me? Sonos. Sonos, definitely. I have that same thing, 13 room Sonos. Um, What's your favorite online music service, then? Pandora. Pandora, I mean, that's in my top two. Pandora and I'm I like Netflix graphics. Netflix crazy right now. I am Netflix insane. I am watching so many docs. I just started doing... I really wanted to see this movie, A Film Unfinished. It's, I'm, you know, I'm crazy into docs, and I'm crazy. I'm not, I'm not crazy, but I am really into doc. I, I've read a couple of books about the Holocaust and Leni Riefenstahl. Mm -hmm. I'm fascinated by filmmakers, mm -hmm. and then I'm fascinated most of all you know by Leni Riefenstahl. You know, you know what else I'm crazy and about? It's a hang film on, about. On. Go ahead. It's a, I, I, it's a film about the Nazis had this incredible propaganda that uh -huh. they. And Leni Riefenstahl was this evil. I mean, she's like the. Uh, Right below Hitler in terms of evilness. I mean, way ahead of Goebbels and Mengele. I mean, she was the most talented manipulator of media and beautiful filmmaker who then used her skills in media manipulation to basically propagate Hitler's evil, wow. uh, you know, He used to have mission. drum beats behind. Like, oh, absolutely. Very this, this is, like... She's the stage manager. Yeah. And there's this incredible documentary that got me to docs when I was younger and, and actually into autobiographies, which I've become obsessed with, called The Wonderful, Horrible Life of Lenin Riefenstahl. And uh, then this new one came out, which is a film unfinished, which I'm only 20 minutes into on Netflix, about they found the secret archive of all the propaganda films that weren't released. Oh, wow. I mean, these were sick melon farmers. Go ahead. What do you say? Netflix, <laughs> Netflix is approved. Netflix. I, Netflix I'm crazy about. Um, Chargeify. I don't even know what that is. I have to show you. Chargeify. Yep. And a toss-up between Lead, Lead 411 and Jigsaw. What are those two? Lead 411 and Jigsaw let you look up emails of hard to get to people. Mm. Well, Jigsaw, I've seen. Yeah. I, I get emails from Jigsaw. Okay. Mo uses so, Jigsaw. Yeah. Mo, you can put Sonos, Pandora, Rhapsody, Netflix, Charger, Fly, Lead 411, and Jigsaw on the approved sponsor list, as well as Sling, which is if it's still available. Yeah, it's Dish Network, though. It's yeah, so forget hard. it. Forget Sling. Then. Venmo, I really like Venmo. It's what a is way Venmo? to charge via text messages, V E N M O. So we need to talk check about that. Square. Don't, Take don't. a look at that one. It's kind of an interesting product. That's the way you can send money to each other. Yeah, via SMS. Yeah. I saw that. Isn't um, isn't Gary V an investor or something? Probably. Advisor? Yeah, because he, it's, it's East Coast. Yeah, he shipped me money from that. So um, he, did what? he shipped me some money. For, oh, Sparrow. Spa he shipped me some money. Sparrow, the email client, I like that a lot, and that's paid. And Evernote, I love. I'm going Evernote crazy these days. Evernote. Okay. There's a cool 37 Signals app too. Play with that. If it's like high rise? time. High rise. Yeah. The, the I have time high rise. I use stuff. high rise. Actually, I would take high rise as an advertiser. Although I have to. Yeah, we have to get back into it. And reportive, of course, is investment, but I wouldn't charge them. Anyway. Uh, all right. Those Am are I all on your great. ad sales team now? I think no. I just, we I think we I have to. Every up. episode at the end of the episode, we have to brainstorm advertising. It, we're sold out right now, but I want to go three days a week. I think. Yeah. Um, uh, especially if we do this Clearstone, uh, Clear Channel deal, and we go five days a week, and we were on we're on the regular oh, cool. radio. Nice. Wow. Yeah, well, I just talked to Clear. I mean, it's it's only. I mean, Forbes said that I'm the best TV host. Of course, they did. In the world, you saw yeah, that, right? Oh yeah, I saw that. You didn't see it. Uh, no. They did say that. Hey, cool. Forbes. I mean, it's a little bit of publication. Oh, it's only an hour and twenty minutes in. You want to end the show? <laughs> Sixty-five minutes. That, listen. I'll make the show as long as the damn please, okay? Like the Howard Stern of nerds. <laughs> Howard Stern of nerds. Somebody actually said, uh, you, you were, your interview technique is so good, it's like Howard Stern's interview technique. And I said, you know what? I Actually, a little bit of influence from Howard, yeah. but a lot of influence from, from Charlie. Oprah. And a little bit from Oprah. I I'm barely like the, cried. I'm like it an was, Oprah. I was on the edge of tears. 
I think that you had a nervous breakdown after the QCAP. Never. I'm too in control. Really? If I did drugs, I would have a nervous breakdown. I'm telling you something. Someday you're going to have a breakdown. You're going to be. You? I picture you on nah. the beach. What? Oh. I, oh my God, Pat, I can't take it. Yep. No, I'll, be, I'll be. I'll be throwing my sand in no, the I air, just, saying, I, "I love my no, beach." No, I deal with the, Sometimes I deal with some young people who are failing. Yeah. And I try to explain to them. If Dave Matthew can blow two hundred million dollars on this, yeah. and you blew two million dollars on your little dinky thing, yeah. don't worry about it. I mean. You're one percent of the embarrassment of Dave Matthews. That's what I try to tell them, Dave. Did you just? Did, you're going to talk to my mother for this one. I'm joking. Is, Dave, no, Dave, Dave you right. are literally a genius. Thank you. You have incredible ideas, and you execute on them. And that, to me, is what it's all about. And I have tremendous respect for you no, and I'm your process. <laughs> I, look at me. You've getting the Oprah moment look now. Look at me for a second, Dave. <laughs> when I meet a guy like you, yeah. I just think, thank God, there's people like Dave Matthews in the world. Because the music. we need dreamers and we need people to push the envelope forward. All right, enough with the music. I loved it. I loved it. That was the nicest thing you've ever said to me. It was becoming a moment. It was good. No, I, I do appreciate the fact that you are a dreamer and that you got the cojones to actually swing the bat. So many people spend their lives yeah, on the so bench. Lame. Oh my God, I got this uh, idea. Oh, what if there was a cat that could scan your stuff and there's a mouse so there should be a cat? I mean, yeah. it's good that those people don't do it. But there's other things <laughs> where people are like, hey, you should be able to watch your media anywhere or you right. should be able to tag things and yeah. around you in the Wi-Fi universe. It's going to make the world a better place and at least it's going to create some goddamn jobs, which is yeah. what the, hey, the country needs. Uh, I'm trying to appeal to the... I'm trying to... Now that I'm going to be on Clearstone five days, a week, I think. I'm trying to appeal to the South a little bit, get a little oh, more yeah, like yeah. this, like, Let's... we need some jobs. This is yeah. America. <laughs> this is America, Steve. and we need jobs. <laughs> and Steve Jobs <laughs> took all the jobs, and he, Steve Jobs needs to ship those jobs back to America. <laughs> we need to make iPads in America. This is American product being made by the Chinese, <laughs> and they're blowing stuff up. We should bet hundred more dollars, and we can put this in we can be making these in America. Alabama iPad. No, honestly, but I, let me tell you something. I think that Steve Jobs should make, this is my pitch to Steve Jobs. Make the iPad in America, have an American made one that comes with a certain design that's only, that you know it's made in America. Yeah, like, like one a design. Flag. And <laughs> make it 150 bucks extra, 100 bucks extra. And I guarantee you the made in America version, because people have pride here and they yeah. realize that we're shipping too many jobs over to the Chinese. Yeah. I don't mean to get old Donald Trump on everybody or whatever, but we did ship a little bit too much out of the country. We should bring some back and see if Americans would actually pay a hundred bucks extra. I'm thinking that I would pay an extra hundred bucks to keep it to give an American a job. I'd rather that than be giving money to people on the side of the road or giving money to welfare. You know, it's, we have a dysfunctional system. Right, I'm going to launch the Technotarian Party. Oh, nice. It's my new technological oh, libertarian wow. party. We'll talk about that. You should be that. a guest every week. I like this guy. <laughs> He's a great. You should do the news. Come do the news roundtable one week. Uh, I, I like me. to have you and Tursing. <laughs> You're in LA. You have nothing to do. All right. <laughs> I'm selling screenplays. Uh, are you really? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next time on the Startups.